Not all wars are fought with guns and cannon fire. Back in the late 1800s, trouble was brewing in Montana as some of the nation's richest and most powerful men, Marcus Daly and William Clark among them, jockeyed for position to take advantage of the richest hill on earth, Butte's massive mountain of copper ore, bribes, ballot box tampering, and dastardly deception. It's all part of this Wild West tale. Who would control millions of dollars in copper? Which city would become Montana's capital? Is there any gold left in the ancient hills? We're about to find out as we delve into the clash of the Copper Kings. Get ready, because here we go. Time, KG and I are flying back to our former home state of Montana, where we'll be hunting for remnants of mining activity dating back over 125 years. Oh. Flying is easy, it's the landings that are the tough part. and I are back in our old stomping grounds to see what kind of history we can unearth. We met over 15 years ago in the little mile-high town of Anaconda, Montana, and that's where we'll begin our search for the lost treasure of the Copper Kings. Born in 1841, Marcus Daly worked his way from selling newspapers to joining the gold rush in the Old West, and by the 1870s was rubbing elbows with major players like George Hearst, father of media king William Randolph Hearst, and buying into silver mines in Utah and Montana. While working for others as an agent and supervisor, Daly noticed that many of the silver mines in Butte were loaded with huge veins of copper ore. As the silver dried up around the area, including in his own famous Anaconda mine, people began to move on. Daly, knowing that Edison's invention of the light bulb would lead to the need for vast amounts of copper to conduct electricity, quietly bought up the mined out properties and began reopening them all as copper mines. This was a brilliant move, which led to what soon became known as the richest hill on earth. With financial backing from others, Daly built a smelter in Anaconda and a railroad to carry the ore from Butte to the smelter. By the 1880s, Daly was a multi-millionaire with a mansion in Hamilton, Montana, and a stable full of world-class racehorses, including a Belmont Stakes winner. Daly's ACM company provided work for the people of Anaconda for nearly a hundred years. The smelter was finally closed in 1980 for environmental cleanup, but his legacy lives on with reminders everywhere, including a statue at the entrance to Montana Tech College in Butte, sculpted by none other than Augustus St. Gaudens, designer of possibly the most beautiful American coin of all time, the $20 gold piece or double eagle. The history here runs deep, and it's time to dig some up. We're greeted with a little weather, but we arrive at our first site ready to go. With thunder and lightning in the distance, we fire up the machines and get to work. Oh, ho, ho. there's a great hit right there. Oh, ho, ho. right there, baby, right there. Oh, ha, ha. check this out. Now this is really cool. I'm thinking maybe I had a lead bullet or something. But this is actually, it looks like a horse necklace. But it's really awesome is it had, obviously had gold gilting on it. I mean, that's pretty freaking cool. A lot of the miners actually lived right here in the 1800s when the boom was happening. I mean, there's copper mines, there's gold mines, there's silver mines, there was all kinds of mines. And there was miners running around here losing stuff, like miners, like children. But all I know is this is a freaking awesome piece of history here in the good old Montana state. Hey, sounds pretty good. Going in. Wow. 
Not in there. Ooh, it's in the clump. Man, this was hammering solid. So it's gotta be, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Look at this. I have the edge of roundness. Edge of roundness right here in the clump. In fact, I'm bringing the clump to you. <laughs> combing the hillsides near Butte and Anaconda on the hunt for artifacts left behind by these hard-working mining communities. Sounds to me like I've got something worth investigating right here. KG! KG, come here! <laughs> Man, you never call me yeah. unless it's good. Here, come here, sir. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, I know there's Look like that. broken glass. That's, a, that's actually got like gold gilting on that glass. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> what do you got? What do you, you got? You just found gold. I just found silver. Oh, <laughs> oh that's got to be a big. Oh, that's, that's a, a, like a quarter-sized coin. That's a quarter. Look, you can see the writing on it. <laughs> hey, that could be a seeded quarter. Oh, it could easily. Out here, could be seeded. It's weird. It might be a token of some kind. No, that's a back of a coin. That's the eagle on the back of a coin. I oh, think. oh, it's upside down. It's the eagle. <laughs> it's a, it's a standing, liberty standing liberty quarter. Standing liberty quarter. Taking it Dang out. It. Standing liberty quarter. It's got a hole like drilled what? through the center, right through the chest of the lady. Oh, liberty. so many. Oh, might have been a necklace. Yeah, the date is still awesome though. 1930. Like, look at the hole in it. It was like, it was like a nail hole. It yeah, wasn't it like a drill. Yeah, it was like pounded in by hand. 1930 Standing Liberty Court Silver Court. Yeah, I love Standing Liberty Quarters. Pretty awesome coin. KG, guess what? Ringy is finding silver like it's no tomorrow. I'm thinking you better get busy because I might become the king of silver myself. Give me time. I'm working my magic. Good find though. Thanks, Cage. Sorry, I was so rude to you just now. This is one of the coolest forks I think I've ever found. I mean, this little tiny handle, I mean, it's a thing of beauty. Oldness is beauty, but this thing is all intricate. There's flowers on one side. Looks like some flowers on the other side. You know what's really funny about this? Is I found it right next to some elk droppings. Look at this. Nice, fresh elk droppings. Ah, man, that sounded good. Look at that. It's a Richard. A Richard gear. Oh, and look at this. Hold on. Oh, man. It's right on the surface. There's broken glass all over here. You know, old time purple glass from the 1800s. It's part of an old pipe stem. Somebody lit up a pipe up here and was smoking away. You can see the hole that goes right through. It's a pretty cool little find. Little copper wing. It looks like some sort of a wing, some decoration, old intricacy. This is like an angel wing. Some beautiful little angel. Some angel lost her wing. Ha ha ha! An old spoon. Man, it's in perfect shape too, look at that. Very ornate old spoon. All right, on to the next one. Spoon in the pock for Ringy. It's not a coin, man, that sounded good. Ah, it's the top of a lock. It's got a number five. That is solid brass. That's pretty cool. There's a little piece of history for you right there. It's got like patent information on it. Now if I can find the bottom of it, and the treasure box it went to, I'm in business. <laughs> I see silver, baby, look at this. Looks like an old, I don't know if that's a brooch or what it is, but that's definitely some stir. Got me some ancient Montana stir right there. Some lady could have been prancing down to the bar, strutting her stuff, and tripped over maybe a bicycle wheel or something went down hard, scratched herself up, tore her pretty new dress, and had to go home in tears. So be careful where you step, ladies. Look at the gold shining. <laughs> Definitely some kind of gold-plated object. Look at that, coin purse. 
Now I just gotta find the other side and a little pouch, and then I can put my coins in it and snap it shut. Oh, look at this. Right on the surface, some weird looking shell. I mean, right on the top of the ground. You can tell it's all weathered and haggard from being out in the elements. Old iron seashell in Montana. That just proves that all this was ocean at one time. Oh, there it is right there. I don't even need a pinpointer. It's sitting right here. Look at that, it's an awesome, like a badge or something. In 1894, Daly campaigned heavily to have Anaconda become the capital of Montana against his major rival, William A. Clark, another Montana copper king who supported Helena. Over the years, KG and I have uncovered several political pins from that campaign that proclaim Anaconda as the capital of Montana. In spite of Daly's efforts and amidst rumors of ballot box stuffing and official corruption, Helena was voted in as the capital. Clark went on to great financial success, had a copper mining town named after him, Clarkdale, Arizona, and became a U.S. Senator, again with reports of huge payoffs of cash-stuffed envelopes to help gain that position. I'm pretty sure neither of these copper kings were worried about where their next meal was coming from. In 1898, Daly went on to negotiate the $39 million sale of the Anaconda Mining Company to a group that included the Rockefellers, but unfortunately died in November of 1900 before he could really retire. We're fighting the rain clouds, but we're not about to give up. Between each little squall, we're finding enough time to recover some pretty cool items. We're both digging up some incredible history, and we're focused on the next great find. Oh, there it is right there. I don't even need a pinpointer, it's sitting right here. Look at that, it's an awesome, like a badge or something. It's a cool shield. Oh, I thought it was like a policeman's badge or something, but it's an actual, like, keyhole. This had to be on some old trunk that, you know, kept all the valuables of some miner that lived up here in a little shack. I know it's just iron, but, you know, this is a pretty cool find. Not quite as big as KG's Australian peephole, but hey, this will get the job done. I got myself an old V-nickel. Beautiful shape, too. Look at that. The lustrous beauty. KG just plucked this from Mother Earth. It's been in a dirt tomb for over a hundred and some years. I saved this coin from utter destruction. 1902 V-nickel, baby! Yeah! Eat your heart out, Ringy! Oh, look at this. Hey, this is shining up. I think this was gold plated at one time. Look at that. This is one of those old suspender buckles. You know, the miners are out here working and they don't want to run around and dig up gold and copper and silver with their pants falling down. So you got to have these buckles on, you know, keep the britches up and the gold a flowing. Oh, check that out. I mean, this is pretty awesome. At first, I kind of thought I had one of them old time clock gears, you know, that move around. But I'm thinking this is actually an antique toy train wheel made out of brass. I mean, that's cool. Nowadays, they're made out of plastic and junk that breaks when you accidentally step on them. But back in the olden days, they made good quality stuff. If you would have stepped on this train, you would have broke your foot. It makes me happy. It's the unknowns that make me the happiest. It's definitely round. I think I got a coin here. And it might be a dime, because it's pretty small. Oh, this is really cool. This is an old time token. I actually have a toke. Good for one fare. And there's a, like a little trolley car or a bus on the back here. Butte City Lines. Think about that. All the people bustling around in this huge city of miners and mining activity. And here you go, you got like a trolley or a bus token that'll take you places. Now we're getting somewhere. 
These tokens were used by miners to get to work and back on the public transit system back in the day. This is real Butte history. It says so right on it. KG is in serious trouble now. A little local memorabilia. Screams Copper King Wars, baby. I mean, this was lost in the heyday of the bickering between the Copper Kings. I mean, this is an old ACM company lamp tag. Anaconda Copper Mining Company. It's a lamp tag. KG and I have found lots of tool tags, lamp tags, and ID tags from the mines in past hunts. So I know this is a great piece of local history. Yeah, this is gonna kill Tim. Oh, look at that! There's a freaking coin sticking out of the ground! <laughs> yeah, look at that! Ringy! Hey, look at this! Oh, that's oh, a that's coin! Oh, that's a freaking coin! That's for a sure. coin! <laughs> yeah, baby! We know this was a mining community in the late 1800s, and there could be anything here from a Civil War age gun to a gold coin. Just knowing that keeps us plugging along. Oh, that's oh, a coin. Oh, that's a freaking coin. That's a sure. coin. Yeah, and you're that's, right. I think yeah, it's, it's an a, Indian. Gotta man. be an Indian. Is that an Indian? I don't. That's not right. Oh, I can take a seated dime! <laughs> yeah! Seated dime! Are I you kidding me? I don't believe it. I mean, see. <laughs> I always want to find a seed of coin. Oh, I can see the date. 1873! Really? 1873! Are you kidding me? 1873. Man, that's awesome. On the surface. Hey, this trumps your <laughs> silver. <laughs> yeah! Eighteen seventy-three seeded dime in KG's park. <laughs> nice find, buddy. KG went home a little early with the rest of the crew, but I don't get to Montana that often, so I decided to stay out and hunt an extra hour or two. And I'm glad I did. So I wander up on this ridge, and I can't believe it. I dug up a bullet, a washer that was screaming just like a quarter. It was hitting 87, 88 on the AT Max. And then I got another one, kind of a mid-tone, maybe bullet kind of sounded thing, but it, man, it was solid, and it was roundness. I am a very happy camper. 12 and a half cent token. <laughs> 12 and a half cent pooey token. Heck yeah, baby. Since the town and state are not included on this token, it's considered a maverick, and that lack of information can make the origin of such tokens hard to pin down. Pooley could be the name of the merchant or even the town. Who knows? But that's okay. For all I know, I could have a super rare Montana territory token. What I do know is that the 12 and a half cent value was pretty common back in the old west. It was based on two bits making up a quarter dollar, which stems from the breakdown of old Spanish reals or pieces of eight. In addition to regularly seen denominations like 5, 10, and 25 cents, we found tokens in unusual values including six and a quarter cents, eight cents, and even two and a half cents. And here's the crazy part of the story. As it turns out, I found another one of these pooley tokens about 10 years ago in the same area. And after comparing the two, I realized that the one I just found has a spelling error. They left out one of the O's. Super rare error toke for ringy. Woohoo! And now that I have two of these tokens, I guess I can afford a shave and a haircut. Get it? It's a great way to cap off the day. Sun's going down, heading back in. Can't wait to show the boys what I found. <laughs> Toke of the pock for Ringy. Oh. 
Author, historian, and detector Steve Moore from Garrett has helped us out with his expert insights in the past, so we agreed to put the burden on him again by making him select this week's winner. A lot of good stuff, guys, but I I think I'm gonna have to go with the one that says ACM, the little tag there. Ah, yeah! <laughs> Looks like KG is the winner in his home state of Montana. I guess that's only fair. We both found some great Montana memorabilia over the years, but this week belongs to KG and his ACM lamp tag. Yeah, I gotta hand it to you. I mean, I, I have an awesome token, but even when I saw that, I knew I knew it was over for me. <laughs> Balance, good job, good effort. Good Steve, job, as good. always. Congrats. Thank you, Good buddy. puns, both of you. Thanks. Yeah. All right, I got a I got a little something for you to do. Come on with me. Right. Look what we have here for you. I guess it's about that time. Time to pay up. You got to stay on that thing for like a minute. All if right. You can't stay on it. You got to get back on it. Here I guess I got to ride the bull. It was so great to be back in Montana, seeing friends and family, even if it was only for a short time. After all those years of exploring the mountains near our former homes, we still ended up learning a few additional historical morsels about the Butte Anaconda area, and we got to add a few trinkets from the past to our Montana mining collections. This is definitely a trip we'll always remember. Join us again next time for more history and amazing adventures on Digging with KG and Ringy.